you will be fine. You will not be strong in open world. And the reason is endless enemies. It can work. But let's be honest, in PvP. Hello everyone guys, welcome on my channel and today we're gonna take a look on all swords. Uh, let's start. So in general, swords is a very flexible weapon. It could be used in lots of scenarios. In solo, small scale PvPs, ZVZs, um, large scale PvP, etc. Also it is nice in PvE. Let's start with first weapon. It is Broad Sword. Broad Sword e spell is actually pretty decent ability with huge amount of damage if we take into account that this is one-handed weapon which allow us to use offhand to mix our gameplay as we want let's talk about pve pve in, in albion is super easy and it should not be your final goal but if you want to focus only in pve aspect of the game since you just started play albion Probably you will farm solo dungeons. For solo dungeons, there are lots of setups how you can do it, how you can level up your broadsword, and here you go, few examples. I recommend you to use Schooler Cowl as your helmet to get your energy back. As your chest, I recommend you to get this self-ignition ability on this Spectre Jacket. This damage that you deal is true damage, which will allow you to erase mobs super super fast. As shoes, I recommend you to use Assassin Shoes with Refreshing Sprint, which allow us to reduce our cooldowns. You got two options, Taproot or Crypt Candle. Choose whatever you like. Taproot will increase your maximum health and your health regeneration out of combat. And the second option is Crypt Candle, which will increase your damage from your old spells. As a food, you must use, in almost in all scenarios, this cabbage soup. It is must-have. For bosses, I recommend you to use poison potions, but not tier 8. It is tier 8 in this example, but for clearing mobs in dungeons, in general, while you are pve and you are fighting very strong mobs, use tier 4 poisons. They are much better, they are super cheap and will increase your clear speed drastically. If you will use this build, you actually even don't need any cape, any expensive cape. But if you have money and you can afford it, I recommend you to use this Tetford cape. It is purely solo PvE build, super effective. If you don't like the mechanic of this jacket, you can change it on Stalker jacket. It will increase your PvE speed too, since you will deal damage around, your, uh, around you and clear speed will be high too, but not as high as uh, with the Spectre jacket. So take it into account. Let's talk about 1v1 scenario, and in most of the cases it will be Corrupted Dungeons. For Corrupted Dungeons I strongly recommend you to use this build. Broadsword, Astral Aegis, Mage Rope, Guardian Helmet, yeah, new Guardian Helmet with this shield, it is still very, very good. And two options of shoes. Assassin Shoes with Repression Sprint or Soldier Boots with Wanderlust. Choose between two of these options. <laughs> About Cape. Why Keeper Cape? This Keeper Cape is super useful on swords. If you press all your buttons correctly, you can erase enemy in few seconds. On top of that, there is unique mechanic um, with this Keeper Cape. When your Keeper Cape is active and you will use your Poison Potion on your enemy, this Poison Potion will deal bonus damage even after your Keeper Cape buff will be over. The main thing, you need to activate your Poison Potion while, while your Keeper Cape is active. In this case, your enemy will melt down super super fast. In most of the cases, you will use the first Q spell and passive on heroic charges. SW spell. You should always swap all W spells, depends on your enemy. Let's imagine scenario. You are fighting Black Hands. This Black Hand user is using Hellion Shoes plus combo E plus W, and you know it. You can parry strike. Uh, his combo and survive. But if you will play versus experienced black hand user, you might fail. So versus if you are fighting, if you see that your enemy is pretty experienced, 
you can try Iron Will. What this ability do? When you activate, you get um, some defensives, you get movement speed bonus, and you get in one heroic charge. But the main thing, you become immune to purges. And as you know, um, Black Hand's E spell purge you with the first hit. So if you will combine your W spell with other abilities like emergency shield on guardian helmet like this and this when black hand user will make combo he will deal to you zero damage zero damage and he will not uh, purge your stacks which is super useful so then don't, don't forget about this trick if you need to burst your enemy as fast as possible now you can use split slash but not in all scenarios not in all scenarios in the last patch, Split Slash was buffed and now animation time is super fast. It got 15 seconds cooldown and pretty decent damage. But the tricky part is that it is super easy to miss this ability. So if you're not sure in yourself, if you're not sure that you will hit with your W, better use another spell. In what scenarios you can use Interrupt? First, it is Holy Healers and Druid Healers. Also, sometimes it is very useful spell versus Blood Letter. 10 key Blood Letter build. If you are facing 10 key Blood Letter build, choose Interrupt. It will boost your total damage per second and uh, it will help you to win a fight. But in most of the cases, in 80% of all scenarios, you will you should keep Paris Strike. It is super strong ability. I really recommend you to use this spell. Versus Kiting builds, you must use Iron Will. There is no alternatives to Iron Will. Only Iron Will. So it was one option how you can play this Broadsword in Corrupted Dungeons. There is also the second option, and let's take a look on the second build. It is Hunter Hood, Cleric Rope, Assassin Shoes or Soldier Boots. Why in most of the cases I prefer actually Assassin Shoes? Because you have an option to change your F spell, your boot spell, on dodge. In some cases it might be very very useful, especially if you see that your enemy got one shot set up or burst build, melee, especially melee burst build, like Black Hands in my previous example. This dodge can help you a lot and win the fight. So that's why you choose Assassin Shoes. As an offhand, the same, Astral Aegis. Also, there is an option to another offhand, and it is Tap Root. It will boost your survivability drastically. As a keep, again, if you want much more stable damage, you can take Tetfoot. But mm, if you will get used to play with this Keeper Keep, if you will get used to play with it, I can bet you will love it. You will love it because uh, sometimes this keep can win you unwinnable fights. It can and believe me, it's worth it. Maybe you will die first two, three times, but later you will realize how much stronger this cape is than regular Tetford cape, if you press all buttons correctly. But if you will, are going to use Keeper cape, I strongly recommend you to use Soldier Boots, not Assassin, because you got only one attempt to kill your enemy. That's why you need a long run, such as Soldier Boots. So if you want to use Soldier Boots, use Keeper cape. If you want much more stable gameplay, you can choose Assassin Shoes with that Hood Key. Why I did not recommend you to use Hunter Hood in previous example? First reason is that Hunter Hood will be nerfed very very soon, or if you are watching video already when the next content update was released, Call to Arms content update, Reflect mechanic was changed. In what way? Bonus damage from your chest, from your foot, will not affect Reflect damage at all. So the only way where it could be useful is when you will combine your Cleric Rope immunity with Hunter Hood. In such way, it could work. It definitely could work. So in this setup, you can try Hunter Hood. But you also can combine it with Guardian Helmet and you will be fine. 
you still will be able to deal insane amount of damage and will be super super tanky. But to be honest, I prefer previous option with mage rope. So about food. Three options. Regular stew that will, will increase your damage. Second is sandwich. And the third one is eel stew that will mm, reduce your cooldown and increase your damage a bit. So choose between these foods. There is no best thing. Uh, in some scenarios sandwiches are good, in some scenarios eel stew is good. It will depend only on you, on you only on your personal choice. About healing potions. Lately healing potions were nerfed, hardly nerfed. That's why I prefer poison potions. Again, you remember what I was saying about Keeper Cape plus Poison Potion. And if you would be able to use your E spell under 3 stacks while your enemy is poisoned and your Keeper Cape buff is active, you can delete your enemy in few seconds. So it is one of the best way to go. Let's talk about open world. You need to understand that with Broadsword you will not be strong in open world. And the reason is your mobility. You can, of course, your, use your E spell as mobility spell. You can, plus Iron Will. But the, the main downside is that your E spell requires a target. Without target, you got zero mobility. So, for example, when you want to run away, you will have problems. When you're fighting several enemies, you will have problems because, again, it is a single target ability. So, it is not the best way to go. But, if you want to roam solo on Avalonian roads in open world, you can do it even with Broadsword. But it will not be so effective as with other swords. I will talk about them a bit later. So, Broadsword as a main weapon. I strongly recommend you to use Assassin Jacket. On our, even on Avalonian roads, in open world, because invisibility is invisibility. You can wait for your cooldowns, you can mm, drop off aggro of mobs. As a helmet, even nerfed Guardian helmet is still very useful. But if you don't like it, very good option is Hunter Hood. So choose between two of these options. There is one more... Mm, option with chest. It is mercenary jacket. But with mercenary jacket, you must use hunter hood. It is must have. And you need to combine these two abilities together. Because it is the only way how you can get heal from your bloodlust. The only way. You will not be able to heal up with auto attacks or your with, the, with your abilities. You will not be able. Only if you will combine mm, reflects and mercenary jacket together. As an offhand for an open world, I got several options. Well, plus minus the same as in Corrupted Dungeons. But instead of Astral Aegis, I recommend you to take Face Breaker. In open world scenario, it might be a bit, a bit more useful because you will combine PVE with PvP, and Face Breaker in such scenario is a bit, a bit better. And about cape, I strongly recommend you to combine Undead Cape with Sandwiches. It is a beautiful combination that will save you from lots of scenarios. As a food, PvP food in open world, only healing potions. Only healing potions. It is must have. Forget about poison potions, etc. You need healing. Without healing in open world, you will have lots of problems. As a boots, two options. Soldier boots or demon boots. Also, there is pretty unique third option and it is at some point broken, at some point broken and it might be fixed very very soon. It is minor work boots with this flea ability. It will save you in almost any scenario if you will not make huge mistakes. Yeah, these boots will silence you, but even under silence you will be able to run away and mount up. If your main goal is to survive, only survive. This minor walk boots is the way to go. And you need to only level up it to tier 4 and buy from auction house 
4.3 boots and you will be safe almost every time so take a look on these boots they are super super strong there is a second combination how you can play you can combine Tetford Cape plus uh, Beeps 2 or Avalonians 2. It will boost your PvE speed, maybe it will increase you a bit in PvP. But if you will face gankers, lots of players, your chances on survive will be super super low. Also there is an option to use this Hellion Jacket plus Schooler Cow. You can even PvE with this build in solo dungeons on Avalonian roads and at some point it will be even better. But again, all about your mobility and survivability. Mobility will be low and your survivability will depend on your cape and on your boots. So make sure that you will use only demon boots, soldier boots or minor boots. You cannot afford to use any other type of boots at all in open world. You just cannot. Otherwise, you will die non-non-stop every time when you will make a mistake. So, that's how you can play in open world in Avalonian roads with broadsword. Okay guys, and now let's talk about small scale fights. It is. Stalker Hood, it is Hellion Jacket, it is Cooler Sandals, Tetford Cape and Face Breaker with broadsword. And you need to use in most of the cases Iron Will or Parry Strike. I recommend you to use Iron Will. I'll explain a bit later. What is your aim in these fights? Your aim is to secure kills thanks to this helmet. When you see that your enemy is 50% health or less, you need to debuff him and finish him with your e spell. You will deal huge amount of damage and you will be super useful in team fights. Super useful. I can bet. The reason why you need to use Schooler Sandals is that you will have problems with energy. And Schooler Sandals might fix this problem. The only issue with the Schooler Sandals that it could be interrupted and uh, they might kill you in some scenarios. That's why there is a second option of this build. You can equip Limper Escape to make sure that you will have enough energy during the whole fight. And boots with blink. You can use cleric sandals with blink. You can use uh, stalker shoes with blink that will increase your damage on top of that. Or you can use assassin shoes with roll or royal sandals with long roll. But I recommend you to use uh, stalker shoes with this Rage and Blink ability. Why you need this Blink? In lots of scenarios in small scale fights, you need to rotate super super fast. For example, you're on low health, your healer is behind you and you need to get healed as fast as possible. Or for example, uh, when your enemy tank crowd control you and soon you will be dead and you need to change your location as fast as possible. In such scenarios, Blink is a must-have in such small-scale fights. As a foot, two options, only two options. Beefs 2 or Eels 2. I actually recommend you to use Eels 2. It is a bit a bit better, especially if you will use 8.1, 8.2, etc. You cannot use healing potions, you cannot. Only poison potions, but it is very risky, you need to good team play with your teammates or resist potions. Resist potions is must have in team fights because it will help you to survive in scenarios when enemy will assist you. Why Hellion Jacket? Why Hellion Jacket and what alternatives we can get? Hellion Jacket gives you lots of survivability and will let you to stand on top of your enemy for a longer time. As an alternative, you can use Soldier Armor. It is pretty solid option too. It is still viable, it got good native defensive stats, so it is good option too. So you choose between Hellion Jacket and Soldier Boots. 
Personally, I recommend you to use Hellion Jacket. It is a bit better. A bit better. But not in all scenarios. Many will depend on your enemy. Well, so why Iron Will? You need to be sure that you got always three stacks of Q when your enemy is 50% of health. That's why you need to use this Iron Will spell. Or, for example, you are using Hellion Jacket and your enemy, this spell, and your enemy got Daybreaker, spear that you can purge you. You can easily use a Hellion Jacket. When you see that your enemy is casting Purge ability, you can press Iron Will and protect yourself, save your stacks and save your Jacket spell. About ZVZs. Broadsword is not playing in ZVZs at all. At all. Just forget about it. If we will return back to PvE part, solo PvE part. Again, guys, um, you can PvE literally with everything. It doesn't matter. You will fame farm fast with almost any items in this game. With almost any items in this game. So if you want to farm with, for example, soldier armor, you can do it. You can do it. If you want to farm with um, Hellion Jacket, you can do it too. Or maybe you want to farm with Assassin Jacket, you can do it too. It doesn't matter. Yes, clear speed will be a bit, a bit slower. But who cares? You are leveling up your armor pieces that you will need in the future. So, again, that option that I was saying before with Spectre Jacket or Stalker Jacket is for maximum fame per minute but if you don't care about maximum efficiency you can take literally any items you want literally any if you see that you are you need more energy equip limher escape if you think that you need a bit more damage take tetford escape all is easy guys all is super easy just don't forget to use soups there are mm, <laughs> must have almost in any pv scenario or avalonians too Okay, guys, the second weapon is Claymore, this one. For Corrupted Dungeons, 1v1 scenario, you can use this build that is on your screen. It is Hunter Hood, Mage Rope, Keeper Cape, Claymore, not Royal Sandals. You can use Royal Sandals, but it is too risky. You will have more damage. Uh, but for a new player, if you are a new player, I do not recommend to use Royal Sandals. It is super risky, plus they are super expensive. I recommend you to use regular soldier boots. It's the best way. It is the best way to go. Plus poison potions. Only poison potions with claymore. You need to burst your enemy as soon as possible. In some scenarios, I forgot to tell you about it when I was talking about broad swords. Um, I recommend you to buy few resist potions. Two, two resist potions is enough. Why? Again, classic scenario. You are facing black hands. If you will be able to drink Resist Potion before he will make his main combo, main combination, you will almost, you will not almost lose any health. It will protect you from his first huge burst damage. So, in some cases, Resist Potion might be very useful. But since we are using swords, it is not necessary. Because again, you remember this trick. When you see that the Black Hand user is casting Hellion Shoe on you, you can activate Reflect and W, and he will not purge you at all, and he will get damage back to himself via Reflect, of course. There is an option to use Claymore with Guardian Helmet. It is still viable and good option. It is still a very good option for Corrupted Dungeons. Even after it was changed, it's still viable. So, especially versus Curse players. Especially versus Curse players. So, try it. Try it, you will not regret. Also, there is classic build with Claymore. It is still playable, it is still viable. Hunter Hood, Cleric Rope, Assassin Shoes with Refreshment Sprints, or with Soldier Boots with Wanderlust ability with Tetford Keep. It is much more stable build, I would say. But again, in most of the cases, anyway, you will need to use Poison Potion. It is the best way to go. So, it is Corrupted Dungeons 1v1. One more viable build for Corrupted Dungeons with Claymore is 
with assassin jackets. So you need to use assassin jackets, hunter hoods, tetrod cape, soldier boots or leather shoes with refreshment sprint, but again I recommend you to use soldier boots with healing potions in this scenario, healing potions and claymore. Versus some enemies, uh, poisons would be better, especially if you are fighting a cloth user. Poisons are much better, but if you are facing tanky enemy in heavy armor, for example, um, healing potions are must-have. So, in crafted dungeons, you need to look on your enemy build. If you see that your enemy is a druid, for example, with mercenary jackets, this invisibility is a must-have must have because when he will use mercenary jacket you can just press whoop invisibility and you will be okay and you will be all right if you are fighting a curse for example with dot spells invisibility will not help you in this case you must take inferno shield inferno shield with hunter hood this reflect will save your ass but anyway these fights will be very tough for you but this build in general it is playable, but not the best, but it is playable. As an alternative for this build with Claymore for Corrupted Dungeons, you can equip Fiend Cowl. It is a super useful spell that can purge your enemies, especially if you are fighting um, Curse players with double Mercenary Jacket. You can block your Mercenary Jacket, first effect of the Mercenary Jacket of your enemy with your Inferno Shield, you can tank it, but when he activates his second Mercenary Jacket, you can purge it with the End Cowl, which is super useful. And don't forget guys, don't forget about your E-Spell. When you cast your E-Spell, you can avoid damage. So if you are, for example, playing versus one-handed curse and you see this tiny, tiny bomb will blow up soon, on the last second, use your E-Spell and you will avoid damage from this E-Spell. Which is super, super useful tip and don't just don't forget about it. It is uh, the reason why you can beat one-handed curses. Only thanks to this charge ability. So take it into account. So now let's talk about open world. Again, the same builds as with Broadsword. Nothing has changed. You can combine Tetford K plus Beef Stew, or you can combine Undead Cape with uh, Sandwiches and Healing Potion. The only difference is that um, with this open world setup, you can use Poison Potion. And the reason is Assassin Jacket combo with your e spell. This E-Spell charge got a bit more damage uh, than Broadsword, but this damage matters. This damage really matters when you try to burst your enemy fast as possible. So, in ideal scenario, you are starting to fight with your enemy, you are activating your deflecting spin, you are getting stacks with your Q, then you are going invisibility, when you got at least two stacks. Then, on last seconds of your Q stacks, you're refreshing your stacks with W. In total, you will have three stacks. And instantly use your poison and then use your charge. In such a way, you can delete your enemy in open world. But again, don't forget, Claymore as a broadsword is not the perfect weapon for an open world. Because this uh, mobility spell, charge, it is good, it is perfect. You will have um, immunity when you will use your e-spell, so you will ignore damage, you will ignore crowd controls, etc. But you need targets. That's why it is again not the best option for an open world. About other builds, again, same combo. Hunter, mm, Hood plus Mercenary Jacket. It can work, especially if several um, enemies are attacking you. You will be able to region up um, your health back, with Bloodlust, only thanks to this Hunter Hood. If you are thinking about combination like Mage Cowl plus Mercenary Jacket, so when you will use Mercenary Jacket and then use Mage Cowl, it is not effective, guys. And now let's talk about small scale fights. And surprise, surprise, it is the same as Broad Sword. Your main aim is to finish your targets. In most of the cases, it is your first aim. So the builds, the build is the same: Stalker Hood, Hellion Jacket, Stalker Shoes, Limhurst Cape, or Tetford Cape, 
Schooler Sandals, where it is. Schooler Sandals, Stalker Hood. Again, 50% of health of your enemy, your debuff, fin him, and use your E and finish in your target. The best way to go. About other activities. ZVZs. No. Forgot about ZVZs. Claymore is not a ZVZ weapon. It can be used in 1v1, in small scale PvP, in 2v2 Hellgates, in 5v5 Hellgates, but not in ZVZs. And now, guys, let's talk about Kingmaker. It looks cool. Just take a look. Mm -hmm -hmm. But it is useless as hell. <laughs> let me explain. So this ability got cool animation, it got knockback, etc. But sometimes it can be so buggy that you, for example, see an enemy in front of your screen. He's in front of you. You should hit him, but you cannot. With some sort of magic, you can easily miss your e spell. It got super high cooldown. Your e spell heavily depends on Q stacks. And damage is so-so. And about damage. It got two types of damage. First is when you swing your sword. And then uh, the second part of the damage when you hit your enemy. So the funny part is with uh, this first swing. Long time ago, uh, this sword was uh, at least playable with um, in small-scale PvP with Assassin Jackets. Because you could get stacks. Yeah? I'll show you. Uh, for example, like this, like this, and uh, let's take Cleric, it doesn't matter. You could get stacks with your swords, you could go invisibility, then on the last second of your stacks you could use your Iron Will, Boots, and clap your enemy on tons of damage. But it is not working anymore, because this bonus damage that you got from invisibility, from ambush, will work on your first swing of your weapon and it is destroying the whole combo of this sword that's why it is not it is unplayable right now with ambush the only way where you can play with this sword is small scale pvp and that's all in some cases also zvz's so for small scale pvp you need to use halion jackets You can use Schooler Cowl, you can use Royal Sandals and Tetford Key. If you want to get more protection, you can equip Marlock Keep. If you want to get more damage and we want to burst your enemy while your Keeper Cape is active, you can try Keeper Cape, but it is too risky. I do not recommend you to use it. Uh, the best option for small scale PvP, in my opinion, is Tetford Keep. It is the best way to go. You can combine it. You will have defensives from your Schooler Cowl, plus you will not have any pro problems with energy. You will be tanky as hell with Hellion Jacket, and when you're going to burst your enemy, you can just press your, your Royal Sandals, and with three stacks of your Q spell, hit your E spell, and delete enemies. It can work, but <laughs> there are much better options um, in Sword Lane and in other weapon lanes much better options. I'm not telling it is totally useless weapon. I'm not. It is cool looking, it got decent damage, but in real PvP scenarios, in real fights, it is bad. Okay, it is not bad. It is so-so. It is so-so. I personally don't like it. It is playable, of course. But there are much better options. Much better options. For ZVZs, you can play as a clapper, and one of the options how you can play with it, it is Royal Sandals, Cleric Grope, Cleric Cow, Fort Sterling Keep. Instead of Fort Sterling Keep, you might use Martlock Keep for more survivability if you stack in combat, or Keeper Keep, but Keeper Keep is too risky, but it is playable. So your aim... Oh! Also, instead of cleric row, cleric cowl, sorry, instead of cleric cowl, sometimes super good option is royal hood. Sometimes, but you need to 
calculate your buffs otherwise you will lose all your bonus damage so you need to be very very careful with royal hood such build can burst your enemy super super fast main idea is to get stacks on enemy tank or on closest mob in zvz and when you are ready you are activating your helmets your boots activating your rope w re refreshing your stacks and clapping your enemy that's your plan and then fall back that's all about pve doesn't matter doesn't matter you can use the same items that i was suggesting before if you want only flame farm or you can take combat um, pieces of gear like uh, this one hellion jacket plus schooler cowl plus um, that for cape, yeah. And as boots, since you got no mobility, you need to survive. It is demon boots, soldier boots, e or minor war boots. If you are talking about uh, flame farm in open world on Avalonia roads, if it is a uh, solo dungeons, and I remind you guys, you, you can wait um, 90 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 90 seconds when you enter solo dungeon and entrance to this solo dungeon. Oh. Someone so sprayed on the channel, thank you. <laughs> and entrance to this solar dungeon will be closed. That's why you can't even use any leather boots with the refreshment spring to increase your mm, farm speed. Oh. Uh, by the way, about subs. Don't forget to subscribe on this channel and press like button, guys. It is it is very, very, very important. Oh, so much subs lately. Come on, what is going on? Okay, guys, and now one of my favorite weapons is dual swords. I love it. I really love it because of its E spell. It got high amount of mobility and even native damage, thanks to this effect that you can deal 6% of the target's max health, make it viable even on zero or low amount of stacks. Of course, uh, there are some downsides. Uh, this E spell is easy to interrupt even with random random spells random spells so that's why um i will talk about small scale fights a bit uh, later let's talk about right now uh, 1v1 scenarios in 1v1 it is too big especially if we compare it to broadsword or claymore dual swords are so so the only way how you can use uh, dual swords Successfully, it is ratting. If you want to rat corrupted dungeons, uh, which means avoid fights, uh, just kill bosses, just farm, door swords are perfect. Because you got mobility from your iron will. You got lots of mobility thanks to this jump. You can refresh your um, spells with the refreshment sprint and uh, get even more mobility. And I re actually recommend you to rat if you are going to rat. Um, with dual swords, use assassin jacket and schooler cowl plus that would keep it is the best way to go as a food. Uh, use um, Avalonian stew, not regular beef stew, like in this example. Avalonian beef stew tier 8 would be nice. As, po uh, as potions, use poisons on bosses when someone is uh, invading you in corrupted dungeons, switch on healing potion. You need to use this as an assassin jacket uh, because of this ambush. Thanks to this ambush, you can reset fights um, almost in any scenario. There are low amount of builds that can catch you. And if you will play without mistakes or if you, if you will make some mistakes, you will survive, guys. You will. It is super cool build with high mobility. Again, in 1v1 fights, you can kill people. Don't get me wrong. You can kill people with almost any weapon in this game you can but we are talking right now about global efficiency i was killing lots of people with those swords on my alt account when i was ready etc when i knew that uh, my enemy build is weaker than my red build in pvp i was able to kill them or i was able to kill my enemies when um, they were making lots of mistakes when they were uh, when they lost lots of health to mobs, etc. You can outplay. You can still kill people. But in fair scenario, one in 1v1 scenario, dual swords, mm, not the best option. On top of that, this jump is easy to avoid. 
with block. Uh, you can easily miss this ability um, with reflect. So in 1v1 it is so-so. But the funny thing is that if you will go in open world, in 1v1 scenario in open world, on Avalonian roads, uh, in black zones, doesn't matter. These dual swords become playable. It is some sort of magic. I know it is hard to understand, especially for a new player, why in 1v1 corrupted dungeons it is bad, but in 1v1 scenario or in open world it become playable. But it is what it is. Um, it is much stronger in open world, if you are playing solo on Avalonia Roads, it is much stronger, especially if you will be able to combine your e-spell with uh, ambush. You can deal tons of damage, tons of damage, believe me. So basically, you are getting stacks, uh, two stacks, go invisibility, when your stacks uh, will be off very very soon, you are activating your iron wheel and clap your enemy. Mm, on top of that, again, you remember that uh, Duo Swords got lots of mobility, so you can have it is opening lots of options to our boots you don't need to use demon boots always you don't need to you can combine it uh, with uh, leather shoes with refreshment sprints even in open world or in with re you can use regular run you can try even uh, royal sandals you can try schooler sandals you can if you want to you can use soldier boots but if you want to survive 100 i anyway recommend you to use minor war boots they are broken so if you want to only survive, your, if your aim is to survive, minor boots is the best way to go, as always. But, again, thanks to this e-spell, you can afford to use other boot spells. It could be literally anything. Maybe uh, except of uh, Blink. But you know what? Take uh, foot on cooldown reduction, take passive on cooldown reduction, and uh, if you will use even Blink boots, you will have insane mobility anyway. Again, thanks to this spell and Iron Will, you will be alright. So for an open world, you can use this build or previous builds uh, that I was um, suggesting you before with Broadsword or Claymore. They will all work together. So soloing in open world is possible with those swords. Much better than Corrupted Dungeons in 1v1 scenario, much better. So let's talk about small scale PvP. Your aim uh, as a Duo Sword user is a bit different than a uh, Broad Sword uh, and Claymore user. Uh, you will not work as a finisher. You can of course finish your targets, you can deal massive damage, but it is not your main aim. Your main aim is to deal as much damage as possible when your enemies is stacking in one place. This is your main aim. You will be in front of the lane, so you need to use Schooler Cowl, cowl sorry, Hellion Jacket, Tetford Cape and Stalker Shoes um, if you are playing uh, with group, with healer, with other, other damage dealers, it is pretty solid option, really solid option. You can change your helmet on a Spectre Hood to refresh your um, cooldowns on your Hellion Jacket. You can do it. You can uh, do lots of combinations. If you want to clap your enemies, like in mini ZVZs, you can do the same trick with Assassin Jacket and it will still work, but it is too risky because if you will miss with your combo when you will get stacks and use invisibility and land your E, and if you will miss, you will have some problems. That's why actually I do not recommend you to use this combo in small scale PvP. But if you will manage to hit your enemies while your ambush buff damage will be active, in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you already won a fight. One of my favorite uh, options is to play dual swords with cleric rope. Why you need to play with cleric rope? Um, this e spell is easy to interrupt with random abilities, but before the jump, if before the jump uh, you will use everlasting spirit, you will become immune to different types of crowd control, which will protect your e spell 
from failure. So basically, when you get stacks, uh, before the jump, uh, just activate uh, your mm, Everlasting Spirit from Clever Crop and then use your e spell. In such a way, people will not be able to interrupt your e spell and you will 100% land your e spell, which is very important in team fights. Super important. Also, you can combine it uh, with Soldier Armor. It is pr pretty decent option too. You can be uh, some sort of bruiser, a uh, melee player that is standing in front of the line, you can uh, hit your enemies uh, if, for example, your enemy is a um, curse player and he casts one, at least one Q spell on you, you immediately turn on your fury spell on soldier armor and wait. Wait until you will have maximum stacks. And then you can just burst your enemy with your e-spell and you will deal tons of damage and if we take into account that you are a heavy armor user it is actually insane you can be useful in fights for so for small scale fights it is one of the best weapons in open world but you need some practice you need to know when you need to land this e-spell when you can land this e-spell you need to pay attention or on enemy tanks or and on enemy healers when they use their defensive spells when they use their stats etc because if you will not they can easily counter your e-spell and this is a very bad thing for you about ZVZs. Plus minus the same items as with Kingmaker. So it is Royal Sandals, it is Cleric Rope. You remember this uh, mechanic when your Cleric Rope is active, you your enemy will not interrupt your e-spell. Uh, cleric Cowl or Royal Hood, Port Sterling Keep or Martlo Keep or Keeper Keep and not healing, <laughs> not healing, resist potions with foot only on damage. Again, your aim is to stack on closest enemy tank and then clap your enemy or to get stacks from uh, nearby mobs. Super easy. But since you are a melee player, there is a high risk of dying. So I beg you guys when you will jump into your enemy when you will deal insane amount of damage and there will be enemy allies around of your where you land don't wait until you will use resist potion use it immediately and try to run away otherwise there is a high chance that you will die in the place where you land so it is very risky gameplay but it is still possible the second option where you can play in small ZVZ's fights. I prefer to use Assassin Jacket, to be honest. I love this uh, Assassin Jacket, but in such case I use mostly Cleric Cowl. So the plan is uh, obvious, super obvious. You are getting stacks, you are two, at least two stacks of your Q spell, you are using invisibility, Wait for the almost the last second of your Q stack, activate Iron Will, F, activate your boots and land your E spell. If you see that you are in trouble, that your enemy is um, using any crowd control effect on you, use your Cleric Cowl and just pray. Pray that they will not assist you. Uh, then use your Resist Potion, of course not Healing Potion, and try to get back. Uh, this build is work, works perfectly in faction warfare with, with this in these random zvz's fights uh, this build is one of my favorites to be honest is really one of my favorites pve guys pve is the same on all sorts i remind you guys it doesn't matter you can take pure pve items but there is no actually sense in it there is no Focus on PvP items. It is just my personal suggestion. But if you want uh, only PvE, take item that I was telling you before. Next weapon is Clarion Blade. Long time ago it was meta. 
a long long time ago it is what it was must have swords in every fight in solo in small scale even in ZVZs. in my opinion it is one of the weakest one-handed swords right now one of the weakest this aoe damage on ispel is super low it is super low and heavily heavily depends on the stacks Mm, I'm not saying it is unplayable weapon. It is. It is playable weapon in uh, some scenarios, but there are much better alternatives to this weapon. One v one scenario. Forget about it. Just forget. The range of this ispel is super super low, <laughs> and uh, I can bet. In lots of scenarios when you try to fight an enemy, enemy 1v1 and he will just run away from you uh, without even a boots buff, you can even miss with your e-spell. It is so funny why this ability is still in the game, why it did not... Uh, why Retro Man, it is uh, main um, game designer, one of the game designers, why did he did not change this ability is actually a real question for me. But again, it is what it is. Uh, range of this e spell is super super low so in 1v1 it is totally useless especially if we take into account that it got 15 seconds cooldown that you heavily depend on the q stacks oh it is hard forget about 1v1 forget uh, this climbing blade can be useful and actually not bad in PvE part of the game. So clear speeds uh, would be pretty decent if we compare it to Broadswood, Claymore, uh, any other weapons. It is one of the best, I would say, weapons in PvE parts. But Albion is not about PvE, unfortunately. You can use this weapon in open world on Avalonian roads to kill uh, mobs on these roads to again only to kill mobs and if you want to survive use the same build that i was saying not same build same combination that i was saying to you before um undead cape plus sandwiches with demon boots soldier boots where are they or minor shoes that's all but if you will face an enemy of course, there is, a, there is a chance that you can kill it. Of course, there is a chance that you can kill your enemy. No doubt. But in firefight, if your enemy know what is what is he doing, uh, you got zero chances. Just believe me, there is, it is a very weak weapon in 1v1 or... In corrupted dungeons and in open world. Very weak. Forget about it. Only PvE. So, where this... <laughs> Weapon can be used in PvP scenarios. It is only small scale PvP. We will talk about ZVZs a, a bit further, but uh, let's first talk about small scale fights. In small scale fights, it can be useful. It really can be useful in this uh, not in this setup with this offhand with face breaker or with um, crypt candle or with crypt candle uh, with stew and resist potion not poison resist on the resist uh, this clarin blade is a mix between um broad sword and duo sword uh, if you you see the enemy on low health you can just blink in debuff it use e spell and finish your target it will be a bit harder since you need to predict enemy movement so you would not uh, <clears throat> miss your e spell, but it is possible. Uh, but why it is a mix between broadsword and dual sword? The thing is that you can uh, use this build also to damage um, your enemies when they gather uh, together, as with dual swords. When you see that three enemies are standing standing together, and especially if it is uh, cloth users. You can deal a huge amount of damage. You can. So you are getting two stacks. You're using your helmet. If your enemies uh, are more than 50% of health, I recommend you to use it uh, before your blink. Refresh your stacks with W. 
blink in and use e spell. In such case, you will be able to deal huge amount of damage. Huge amount of damage. So you remember, you get two stacks, your enemies got more than 50% of health. You're using D, W, spell, then blink in, and then use your E spell. Then get him back. Or uh, keep uh, pressure with the, your lifesteal aura. But that's why it is a mix between Broadsword and Dual Sword. Uh, I don't like it personally, but it is the only way how you can play Clar and Blade, unfortunately. You can, of course, try Schooler to be more tanky, uh, uh, Hellion Jacket. You can take Martlo Cape and try to deal damage or try to take um, a Tedford Cape uh, with, uh, I don't know, interrupts to stay on a healer to interrupt some spells or take Parry Strike or even Split Slash. You can do it, but... Mm. You will have... You will not have enough damage anyway. You will not have enough uh, defensives. It is very weird weapon and it is too old. Again, if you love to play on this weapon and you, if you have teammates who is ready to play while you're using Claren Blade, play on it. Play on it. First of all, you need to enjoy your you need to enjoy your gameplay. But let's be honest, in PvP it is so so. Some people use this claw and blade in zvz's uh with same almost the same build uh, like i was showing you before in small scale fights um sometimes sometimes they are using a martlo cape martlo cape sometimes they're using limhurst cape um to get more energy in some scenarios they are even using cleric owl to protect their, themselves versus um, claps oh but it is only for fun. If we talk again about pure efficiency, uh, no guys, Clarion Blade is not the best way to go. There are much better options. Um, the only type of ZVZs, I guess, where it could work, plus minus okay, it is a random ZVZ fights between factions. Again, when, where there is a chaos, when there are lots of uh, solo independent players, around. In such cases it might be okay. Again, only okay. Only okay. And that's all. Car Wing Sword. Oh, my favorite, I guess. What? Okay, not the favorite, but one of the favorite weapons in this game. This one. Uh, let's talk about Corrupted Dungeons in 1v1 scenario. You need to understand that Meta in Corrupted Dungeons on a Stalker level or on Slayer level it could be different. This build that you see on the screen with a Guardian Helmet, with Shield, uh, with Assassin Jacket, uh, with Assassin Shoes, with the Refreshment Sprint, with Limhurst Cape, um, with Carving Swords. Um, Eels 2, in this build you need to use Eels 2 with Healing Potion will work properly only on a stalker level on a slayer level it will not work at all there are lots of reasons why uh, but this video is not about it you just need to understand it and don't get me wrong you can kill uh, people with this build even on slayer level but efficiency would would be totally different it will not be so good uh, on Slayer level like it is good on Stalker level. First option is Garden Helmet. With this shield I already tested, it is still playable. It is still playable, you can kill people. Uh, main playstyle is to kite your enemy around and change your W spell depend on your enemy again. If it is a Bolt Caster or uh, Black Hands, it is Parry Strike. If it is only black hands and you get used to play versus them, you can try you can try Iron Will. Versus healers, it is interrupt. It is first option. I will not uh, tell you right now in this video the whole rotation because uh, it require um, the whole video about this build, how you should rotate, etc. But it is basics. And you need to understand that in 1v1 corrupted dungeons, um, 
carving swords is not the best way to go. Uh, broadswords or claymore would be much, much better. It can be played in carving dungeons, don't, don't get me wrong. As, as I was saying before, as a weapon in this game, you can make an impact in a fight. But it is not a good weapon to play in Craft Dungeons. I was testing lots of builds and believe me, there are much better options. But you can play with this build. Also, uh, you can replace Guards and Helmet um, on Hunter Hood. First option, again, was with Guards and Helmet. Second option, with Hunter Hood. Um, and instead of Lumhurst Cape, you should take um, Tetford's Cape if you are using Hunter Hood. Because you will not kite your enemy. You will face to fight him face to face. In such scenarios, you can use poison potions. Second thing, um, way how you can play is with Mage Rope. But in, if you are playing with Mage Rope, again, no healing potions, only, only poison potions, and you need Parry Strike uh, with a Tetford Cape. There is second glass cannon option how you can play is to use this setup this one royal sandals cleric rope hunter hoods carving swords of course with fearless strike that is reducing resistance drastically and with keeper keep you can burst your enemy pretty pretty fast so idea the main idea is to start the fight versus your enemy. You can start even with your hunter hood. You can get stacks, you can use even your parry strike, it doesn't matter. When he will activate your keeper key, immediately activate your everlasting spirit and try to hit your enemy with E spell and with out of tech. If you will manage to do this, if you will combine all these four things together, you can deal even much more damage than with um, burst claymore setup. You will deal much more damage with than with claymore. Maybe not much more, but uh, a bit more damage than with claymore. If you will do all correctly. But again, it is super glass cannon build and super risky. If you want to use a sword in corrupted dungeon, a carving sword is not uh, the best way to go. It is so-so weapon in corrupted dungeons. But in one v one scenarios in open worlds, on Avalonian roads, in black zones, it is totally different scenario. Totally different. And now let's talk about open world. And this built with carving swords, with assassin jacket, with guardian helmet, even with shield, which is still viable, with demon boots, with undead cape, with sandwiches, with healing potion, is one of the best, in my opinion, open world builds if you are playing solo. One of the best. But again, in some scenarios, you can change your boots and your helmet. Since uh, Guardian Helmet was revoked a bit, uh, now it is not a heal, it is shield, you can change it on three options. Three options, in my opinion. First, it is Cleric Cowl to block damage, to protect yourself, for example, versus Mercenary Jackets users. It is Hunter Hood, but again, don't forget that um, Reflect Damage soon will be nerfed, or it is already nerfed if you are watching this video um, much later <laughs> than it was released. Um, we also got Schooler Cow to get energy back. So I see only three viable options for solo gameplay. It is Garden Helmet, Hunter Hood or Cleric Cow. These all options are all viable. As boots, again, three options. Demon boots, soldier boots, and um, minor work shoes. This one. Ah, where are they? Okay, uh, 
I'm lying, I'm lying to you. There is also a fourth option, what you can use in open worlds. It is Assassin Shoes. This one with, of course, passive and cooldown reduction. <laughs> but uh, it is super risky. This short movement speed buff um, will help you in a fight uh, 1v1, 2 versus 1, but if you will get into a trouble, if you will fight several enemies like uh, 1 versus 4 or 1 versus 5, and you need to just run away, you need to survive, um, these boots might kill you. So in PvE, in 1v1, 1 versus 2, they might be good, but in scenarios when you are fighting several enemies, uh, 1 versus 4, when you're not fighting, when you're just trying to survive, it might kill you. So don't forget about it. That's why I still recommend you to use Demon Boots. So you are fighting till the end, uh, if you see that uh, you can kill your enemy and uh, finish the fight, you can use Demon, Demon Boots uh, to catch your enemy when you got low health, when you got even half health. Um, but you need to be sure that you will finish your enemy uh, during the duration of these boots. Mm, on top of that, Demon Boots, um, you also can use a regular run. If you see that uh, sometimes that you are fighting um, a kite builds like Warbu, like Frost Staff, Frost uh, Staffs, you can switch on regular run, and it will not be a mistake. But in case, for example, you are running in open world and you face a group of people, don't even think. This spell, Vengeful Sprints, can save your ass. Especially again if you combine these four things together. Undead Keep, Sandwiches, Demon Boots, Healing Potions. They might save you. So keep use it. Uh, one thing about um, Guardian Helmets in open world. Uh, you need to remember that it is a shield. If you face in an open world uh, Claw Gankers, always remember that, uh, that Claw e spell can dispel shields. Basically, it can purge shields. So if you enemy Claw user is using e spell, do not activate this emergency, emergency shield. Do not. Otherwise, you will lose this buff. Now let's talk about small scale PvP guys. So, for small scale PvP, you got several options. Basically, the playstyle is plus minus the same as with dual swords. You need to, to deal as much damage as possible to your enemies. On top of that, don't forget that this E spell can reduce resistance of your enemy. So, you can combine it with other um, damage abilities of your allies. And this is ideal ideal scenario where you need to use this ability so your aim is to reduce resistance of any cloth enemies and then tell your teammates that i reduced the um, resistance of this guy damage him as much as possible and he will melt down or reduce resistance and deal damage to massive amount of people in one place that's basically your aim you got several options again nothing unique hellion jacket to be tanky as hell or soldier armor you can combine it with school or cowl so you would not have any problems with energy if you want to deal a bit more damage you can take that for keep if you need more defensives, you can take Martlock Cape if you want to go even deeper. Again, as potion, only resist potions. Only resist potions with foot mm, on damage and cooldown reduction. It is ill stew. Also, you can try uh, stew, but mm, ill stew is a bit, a bit better. Believe me, it is a bit, a bit better. As boots with carving swords, you can risk, you can risk, and try royal sandals. I was using them by myself and I really love them, but uh, 
again, you need to get used to these boots because if you will use it in incorrect way, these boots might kill you. So if you want a bit more stable gameplay, you can take regular stalker shoes or uh, these cleric sandals with blink. Because again, let's imagine the scenario. Enemy tank will uh, crowd control you, will push you from your enemies, uh, from your uh, allies, sorry. And the only way how you can escape death is blink. Is only blink. If we are talking about um, random small scale PvP in open world, uh, you can actually even use regular assassin shoes with a refreshing sprint to reduce your cooldowns. It is still viable, it is a good option. The second option how you can play is to play an armor reduction machine row. So you will be able to reduce resistance with your E spell and on top of that you will be able to reduce resistance with your stalker hood which will allow you to finish enemy pretty, pretty fast, especially if um, your teammates will help you. Energy problems can be solved by taking these cooler sandals. So in this scenario, you can, again, take Martlo Cape to be more tanky or take um, Tetford Cape. Choose whatever you want. If you don't like these boots, cooler sandals, don't forget, you need mana anyway. In any scenario, you need mana. You will take Limherscape, and in such case, you can change boots on something else. I forgot to tell you about uh, these cultist sandals with carving swords plus stalker hood. Um, you can play like this. So the main idea in small scale PvP, in, only in small scale PvP, Oh, you're activating your boots when you get Q stacks, use your E spell and amount of <laughs> um, armor that you will uh, reduce will be so huge that it might win you a fight. So there is, it is also a good option, option for small scale fights. Stalker hood, carving swords, culty sandals. You will be a beast of armor reduction. And this is the main downside of this weapon. Carving Sword is not plain in ZVZs at all. It is super weak in ZVZs. Super weak. Guys, guys, guys. The last weapon. The last uh, weapon in Sword lane, it is Galatin Pair. Oh, I can bet you saw lots of claps uh, on YouTube how people were killing people, one-shotting people with this sword. It is pretty strong in... Um, small scale fights, uh, I would say ZVZ is mostly, but if we talk about 1v1, open world, corrupted dungeons, totally useless. Do not use it. Again, you can kill people, yes, 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 but you need to be super lucky to face an enemy that will die to this uh, weapon. You need to be super lucky. Don't use Galatin Pair at all for solo. Mm. PvP in open world and corrupted, please, I beg you, it is a bad weapon. As a PvE weapon for solo, for just random relaxed farm in open world to kill some mobs, uh, you can, you can. And even on Avalonian roads you will be able to kill uh, mobs pretty, pretty fast. But again, remember the main rule in a small scale, uh, not small scale, sorry, in open world um, uh, PvP, that's... Uh, <sighs> PvE, sorry in open world PvE, that you need mobility. And this weapon got no mobility. Literally no mobility, only damage around yourself and that's all. So you are forced to use soldier boots, demon boots or minor work boots. With undead cape, with uh, food uh, on health, with healing potions. This one, this one, this combo is must, must have these four items. There is no alternatives if you want to fame farm solely in open world. Galatin Pair is um, kings of ZVZs. One of the strongest melee weapons in this game that can burst enemy down super, super, super quickly and deal insane amount of damage. Basically the same build as with Kingmaker. 
Royal Sandals, Cleric Robe, uh, Royal Hoods, Golden Pair, and Marple Cape or Keeper Cape. Plan is the same. Second on mobs or on enemy tank, then activating um, your helmet, boots, refreshing your stacks, activating your armor when you're close to an enemy, because uh, you can take random damage and thanks to this random damage you activate your everlasting spirit will which will increase your damage from your e spell and you can deal a of damage 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 well you understood again there is one more trick um, and mostly you will play uh, with these boots not with the royal sandals with royal sandals of course damage will be much higher but it is easy to predict such uh, clap from gallatin pair with this uh, mage sandals it will be much harder what these boots do it is delayed teleport which allow us to cast our e spell um, and teleport to our enemy at the same time so let's imagine uh, we get two stacks we are activating your our helmet and on four stacks we are using uh, our shoes to location where we're gonna mm, deal our damage from our e spell and at the same time we are casting our e spell i will show you so let's imagine we got stacks we are using helmets boots and e spell see i was keep uh, casting my e spell in this place but i hit my e spell in area where i land that's a tiny trick unfortunately in other types of gameplay galatin pair is super weak weapon the only good option where it could be used is zvz's and that's all and guys i need you to understand that this video is not a full guide it is just a short overview of all sorts in this game the basic things i hope this video was useful especially for new players so they would know what to expect in future from a weapon that they choose in future there will be more videos about other weapons about uh, daggers fire staffs uh, all mage staffs at all about healing staffs etc so don't forget to press like button under this video and subscribe on the channel stay safe guys bye bye